Back with more of Southern Fried Sports right here on Tide 102.9 and 100.9 FM. Travis Ryer, Senior Analyst for BamaOnline.com. The show, as always, brought to you by Peterbrook Chocolatier. And as promised, time to head to the Peterbrook Chocolatier studio line and check in with my colleague there at BamaOnline.com. Does an outstanding job covering Crimson Tide recruiting, that, of course, being Hank South. Hank, how you doing this morning? Hey, good morning, Travis. I'm doing good. How about you? Cannot complain at all. I know it's been a busy week on the commitment front for Alabama football. A flurry of commitments last week with two of those involving 2020 class members. The other, a big hit for the 2020, 2021 class. A couple of these, and certainly one for sure, is going to impact the quarterback position at Alabama. And we've talked a lot about that with you on recent recent segments uh, here on the program remains to be seen how the 2020 cycle will play out behind center but it, could it be that UA may have at least taken a step towards answering that question at quarterback for its latest recruiting effort yeah absolutely you know Christian story is a guy that Alabama kind of pitched the idea of playing um, whatever he preferred at this point you know he, he's a, he can play defensive back I think that's kind of um, where his future might lie, but also they're going to give him the opportunity to, to compete at quarterback and come in and kind of and learn the position. So I think that's something that really sold Christian story and his family, obviously aside um, from the fact that he grew up an Alabama fan in, in, his, in the state. Um, but if you, if you look at kind of his finalists, it was Alabama and Texas A&M and Texas A&M was recruiting him solely as a quarterback. So it wasn't really any discussion of playing anything else. So I think Christian Story chose Alabama because, um, you know, they were giving him the option. If quarterback didn't work out, he had an opportunity to go play defensive back as well. And, you know, obviously with, with his kind of ability, he, he can probably do a few more things than just those two uh, positions. So it'll be interesting to see how he develops in, in a system like Alabama where, where he is getting um, everyday training at that position and, and can kind of really – hone in his skills and, and develop there. So, um, you know, big pickup with, with a guy that can do a lot of different things. Interesting aspect with Christian story that you disclosed to me before we went on the air, uh, son of a coach, right? But not necessarily uh, a guy who has been, you know, we won't say well coached at the position or just, just not something that's been emphasized as much with him, I guess. Right. And, and, you know, Christian Story's dad, Clifford Story, the head coach at Lynette, he'll, he'll, he was first to admit when we, when we spoke with him last week that, you know, he, he's not a quarterback's coach. He, he can't, you know, give him the, uh, you know, the, the full, um, a full education of, you know, how to develop and, and you know, become, um, you know, reach your potential the position, I should say. And, and so, you know, he, he was excited about Christian picking Alabama to, to be coached under Steve Sarkeesian and the staff they have in place because, you know, like I said, he's going to get that everyday training. They're going to be able to get um, the most out of him at the position and, and really kind of take the tools he's already, you know, learned and, and you know, put together and has just, you know, got gifted ability um, and, and kind of put it all together um, at the next level. So I think that's something that, you know, not only for Christian, but his family as well. Yeah. And we talk about dominoes in recruiting, and I don't think that's ever more true than at the quarterback position. It seems like when a top quarterback makes a choice involving an elite program, there are those dominoes that fall in the following days. We saw a big one go in Alabama's favor in Drake May for the class of 2021. Then a, I guess a, a few days later, actually on Sunday, I believe it was yesterday, Jalen Milrow of Katy, Texas commits to the Longhorns, the home state Longhorns. Now, Tell us about, I know you've covered this on BamaOnline.com for our subscribers there, how those two guys sort of stacked up on Alabama's recruiting board at that quarterback position for the class of 2021. Yeah, you know, those those two guys were Alabama's two top targets at the position um, coming out of the month of June. Both guys threw for the staff last month, and, you know, of course, probably most important position to evaluate in camp as far as making decisions and who's a take, who's not is, is the quarterback position to camp and throwing for the offensive staff and, and kind of um, going from there, you know, every quarterback that's ever committed to Alabama had to go to camp and throw. Um, I, I can't think of one that, that didn't, I mean, I've been covering for a few years, so there, there might be another one, but um, as far as the guys I've 
covered. They've all had to go throw, and uh, both Drake May and Jalen Milrow did. Um, both guys were the, the priority guys, and both guys had opportunities to commit, and and Drake May uh, went first. And and so, you know, as far as um, if Bama preferred one guy over the other, like I said, they're both takes, so it's hard to say, but I, I probably would lean more towards Drake May being the guy they, they, they wanted. Um, over of the pair, um, you know, you, you look at him with his frame, six foot four, two twenty, or six foot four, two hundred, still growing. Um, you know, he's in a family of, uh, of basketball players, football players, baseball players. He's in a really athletic family, um, and kind of has uh, hasn't even reached his ceiling yet as far as um, what he can do on the football field once he devotes his uh, his full attention to that. So, um, you know, they, they got a, a, a really talented athletic prospect in Drake May that, you know, they can, they can work with and develop. And, you know, I think they're excited about that. And, you know, I think Texas got a really good quarterback in Jalen Milrow as well. Yeah. You talk about Drake May, he's listed as a top five type pro style quarterback for the class of 2021 with the expectation being that he may very well move to that five-star status as we move throughout the process in the next year or so. Uh, but a family of athletes, as you noted, uh, most recently, uh, older brother Luke, standout basketball player for those uh, iconic Tar Heels of North Carolina. Now, looking at the 2020 class with, with Christian Story, Timothy Smith, all of this sort of happened in about an 18-hour window last week. Uh, and Timothy Smith was sort of sandwiched around or between the two quarterback types, although, as you said, Story could end up at another spot, potentially on the defensive side of the ball. Timothy Smith of Sebastian River High School down in Florida makes his commitment to Alabama, commitment number 22 for the Crimson Tide in the class of 2020. Uh, coming in on the heels of, as we've talked about before, just uh, a potentially elite uh, all-time type defensive line class, for the Crimson Tide in 2019 uh, compared to those guys uh, that we've seen three of them in spring practice, three more coming on campus this, this summer, uh, where would you sort of put Timothy Smith in relation to that, to that 2019 group? You know, he, he's a good one. And, and I think, you know, the common theme between all these guys um, is just, you know, they all are just massive massive prospects but none of them really lack any athletic ability you know you look at all these guys i mean timothy smith in particular six foot four 340 pounds and he can just move really well for that size and and i you know you could say this about any player coming in coming up to the college level you know a strength and conditioning program um will really work wonders on them but i, I think in timothy smith's case in particular i think i think it's going to really help him especially you know we're not sure yet whether he's going to be an early enrollee but if he was able to get in the program you know a semester early and to really kind of you know dive in and, and take advantage of that um the, the strength and conditioning program with scott cochran you know I, I think he could be a guy that that could contribute early in, in this in this field of just elite defensive line talent alabama has um ready to ready on uh, ready to go so um you know he big pickup ranked a four-star number 13 defensive tackle in the country uh, you know, the Florida schools really wanted him. They wanted to keep him home. But, you know, Alabama got him and, and pulled him out of the state. So um, I know Alabama's happy, and uh, they, they got a really good one on, on the heels of, a, of, like you said, probably all-time best defensive line class on paper. Yeah, Timothy Smith, similar to the offensive side of the ball with the line of scrimmage. Alabama, not to be outdone on that side of the ball when you talk big guys for that 2019 class, elite there as well, and similar in that, some of these 2020 offensive line signees aren't going to be rushed in terms of their development. They're going to have the benefit of time in large part because of what Alabama looks to have done uh, in 2019 on that side of the ball. I think it's a similar situation on the defensive side of the ball. So Timothy Smith should have uh, the luxury of coming along at a very reasonable rate. You mentioned uh, the work down in the state of Florida, South Sunseri. Uh, previously of Florida State, previously of the University of Florida. Was it Sal's relationship uh, in the state that helped Alabama with Timothy Smith? Was it the previous connection with Jerez Parks to the school down there at Sebastian River uh, that got Alabama over the hump? Or, Hank, was it a combination of a couple of things? Yeah, you know, I think it was a combination of both. I think the the relationship with with uh, Sebastian River High School and obviously landing Drez Parks a couple cycles ago, um, that kind of opened the door and, and had Alabama in there. And I think, you know, South Sincere came in and closed the deal 
Um, you know, we, we've heard from a lot of recruits um, since he's uh, rejoined the staff at Alabama. It's, you know, I, I knew Coach Sal at, at Florida, and now, now I know him at Alabama, and it helps Alabama. And like that, that's been kind of <laughs> – several recruits have said that. You know, McKinley Jackson has said that. Um, Quandarius Robinson, I, I think that was a huge part in, in landing Quandarius Robinson along with um, Carl Scott, who's his area recruiter. Um, so, you know, it's been, he's been a big boost to this recruiting staff and, and a guy that's going to keep Bama really strong in, in Florida, um, you know, more so than they already have in, in recent years. So we've got another champions cookout coming up. I take it this weekend, as a matter of fact, and it looks like in addition to perhaps trying to close out this 2020 class, as the numbers get tighter and tighter, uh, some, some big names for the class of 2021 already. Uh, looking to make that trip to Tuscaloosa as well. Give us a, a note or two, uh, a primary emphasis for you uh, for the upcoming weekend and kind of this this next week in general. Yeah, you know, it's going to be um, – I, I don't think it's going to be as big of a, a visitor's weekend as we saw that the uh, cookout in June, which is to be expected. That's how last year was. I think that's how every cookout – the dual cookout summers have been. It's always – the first one's always kind of the bigger one. The second one's kind of the uh, a little bit smaller one, but still, you know, some some big targets. Um, one thing I'm watching this weekend is just kind of how, you know, the wide the the wide receiver position in, in Alabama's 2020 class. You know, um, obviously we saw DeZalen Worsham decommit a few weeks back after visiting Miami. Um, they've got three guys on board. You know, you, you have to imagine they're going to take another one or two at, at the position. And just the, the the guys out there that Bama's in the mix for. And, and they're going to have a couple on campus this weekend. And, and Keishon Boot, Boutte, I guess that, that's how you say his name, the LSU commitment, um, that the top 50 uh, recruit, uh, one of Bama's top targets at the position. He'll be back after visiting for three days last month. Um, Brian Robinson, another top 100 receiver that just decommitted from Miami recently. He's expected to visit before uh, before the end of the month. I'm not sure if it'll be the cookout, but he, he did say he's going to try to be at Bama um, later this month. And, and so, so he's a big receiver target. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll see beyond that. Um, Bama's going to have several commitments back, several important commitments back. You know, Drew Sanders hasn't been on campus since April when he flipped from Oklahoma. Um, he's planning to make it back. Five star athlete um, that's uh, that's gearing up. Um, for his senior season. And then another interesting, we mentioned underclassmen, but they're going to have a couple five-star underclassmen. Dylan Brooks, who's an in-state five-star defensive end, outside linebacker type. He told me he'll be on campus Friday, this upcoming Friday. And then Amika Egbuka, the number one athlete in the country, um, he's expected on campus on Monday. And he actually has family in Alabama. His family's from Alabama, or I believe his grandma went to Alabama. I think that's his connection to the school. So he's coming all the way out from Washington. So um, so they're, they're going to have some guys making uh, traveling a little bit to get on campus. But it'll be another big weekend. And, you know, I, I think it can really help, you know, carry Bama, get some momentum going again, um, carrying into the month of August, which is another dead period. And so it'll, it'll slow down right after the, this weekend. Yeah, a, a lot of times there are what I call real-time recruiting weekends and this is going to be one of them really this next week in general and that's why you're going to want to keep it tuned to bamaonline.com with hank south tim watts publisher of the website right on top of things throughout a big stretch here as we head towards fall camp we're gonna we're gonna take you right from a big recruiting stretch here right into the start of fall camp 2019 at BamaOnline.com. Well, Hank, as always, we appreciate your time here on the program. Keep up the great work. In fact, Hank just dropped an update on some some of those key 2021s uh, that are expected to make their way through Tuscaloosa in the coming days. So you're definitely going to want to check that out right now. BamaOnline.com. Hank South. Hank, thanks a lot, my man. Anytime. Thanks, Travis. There he goes. Hank South of BamaOnline.com.